Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name is Acacia. Today I am going to answer a question that I've been asked multiple times on my channel in different ways, which is how do I read when hearing voices? I can answer that question from the perspective of someone who has heard voices since the age of five. I can't answer it as someone who's come into hearing voices later on in life. Um, so bear with me on that because that's going to be a very different answer than my answer because I've learned to learn and learn to read while hearing voices. I didn't learn all of those things without the voices. The voices were part of the learning experience for me. So everything took longer and was harder um, and caused a lot of trouble. But once I learned, I learned to do all of the school related activities with the voices. So by the time I hit 16, 17, I'd figured out a fair amount of what I needed to figure out. Um, but it took 16 or 17 years to fully be able to um, function with the voices um, to the point where I could get assignments done and figure out how to learn things. I never really learned languages. Um, I tried Spanish, I tried French, and I tried Latin and I couldn't get any of them. I also tried sign and I did really well with sign, but I think that's because it was not a sound. It was a motion and that made way more sense to my brain than trying to make a new sound while there was so much sound. It was just, <sighs> but now I have an alter who speaks French, so obviously some of the French took. <laughs> Go figure. Um, so let's start with learning to read. I struggled immensely to learn how to read. I didn't learn to read until I was seven or eight. I could read some. My comprehension was good. Um, and I could memorize what was read to me and then read it back to you. But sitting down and formulating words and being able to make them into cohesive thoughts was not my forte. Not my forte at all. And my spelling is atrocious to this day. Like, that never stopped being bad. My vocab is very poor um as far as like writing goes because I just stay away from the big words because I just can't spell them I just can't spell them so if I ever wrote a book it would be like the most simplistic thing ever and it would just be ridiculous um actually I'd probably have an editor be like let's use bigger words and I'd be like can you spell that for me please and then I would go from there but I I was five when my first voices started to appear, and there were two distinct voices that appeared at the age of five. Um, I now know them as Freddie and Amy. Freddie was a very fearful and cautious and oversensitive and hyper-aroused child. And Amy was loving, sweet, hyper, very nosy, very intuitive, and very friendly. Um, and between the two of them, I would switch constantly because I just didn't know how to control not switching. So I would go between this very sullen, very quiet, very subdued and scared child 
and this overexcited, very friendly, very attentive, must have social interaction child. So it was very confusing. And that made my social interactions terrible, but it made my reading even worse. Because what would happen is, Amy learned to read because she saw it as a valuable thing. She wanted to read books. She liked books. They were good for her. She enjoyed books. She wanted to read. So Amy learned to read at the age of five. Freddie and I did not learn to read until the age of seven or eight. Now, Freddie stayed at the age of five. He did not grow. Um, so he's still five at this point and still barely knows how to read. He can do it okay, but he barely knows how to read. So if I switched to Freddie or I was myself, I couldn't read. But then when Amy would come out, I could read. So my teachers were very, very angry and very, very confused by the fact that sometimes I could read an entire sentence, com comprehend it, and then explain it to them. And other times I couldn't figure out one word from the next and get a full cohesive sentence out. And then I couldn't comprehend it and tell it back to them. So there was that problem. Then I did the Wilson program, which was a reading writing program that I did from the age of six to eight. And that helped me. And in the process, I had created two more altars, which were Anna and Lizzie. And those two were twins. Um, Anna was the holder of the trauma of my eating disorder, which started when I was seven. Yes, you can have an eating disorder at the age of seven, which would be what I had was bulimia. So I started purging at the age of seven after eating. It was bad. But Lizzie was all about being smart, didn't care what she looked like. She's overweight. She is brunette. She's just very different from Anna, who believes we're a size two, which makes clothes shopping very difficult. It's very confusing. But anyway, Lizzie knew how to read immensely. She took all the Wilson program, learned it by heart, figured it all out, and was able to cohesively and coherently read and write. And she made it so that I was able to function to the point where I could at least get B's and C's. Um, I was still terrible at science, but that was fine. <laughs> um, so as I learned how to read, these parts of me would chatter. And they would chatter about things like the kid that was mean to me on the playground or what we were going to eat for dinner or whether or not we were too fat or whether or not we were safe. Um, and at that point, the kids in my school had become violent towards me already. So I felt unsafe in the school, which meant there was a constant fear of danger within the school, which meant I was constantly switching into Freddy part of self, which would make it so I couldn't read. Um, or I was switching into Amy part of self, which, which was fine, but she was still five. So her comprehension was that of a five-year-old versus that of a seven or eight-year-old. And so it was still not working. And then if I did switch to Lizzie B, who luckily aged with me, and so did Anna, but Anna stopped at age 16, um, and Lizzie B stopped at the age 20. I don't know. Um, but anyway, up until that point, they aged with me, and they were constantly talking. So Lizzie was constantly talking about how we were going to fail, what we were going to do in school, how we were going to do in school, and all of that. And Anna was constantly talking about how we were fat, and how we needed to lose weight, and how we were over 
overwhelmingly stupid and ugly and it was just terrible. So I grew up with those voices and those are only four of the voices that I've mentioned. I have 52. Um, so basically at this point in my life, it sounds like there's a loud party going on in my head 95% of the time. And with that being said, the way I read now <laughs> is I've just learned to read with that noise. So I'm someone who can read with the TV on. I can read with music going. I can read with another person talking. I can just read pretty much anywhere because I'm so used to chatter that adding extra chatter on top of it doesn't phase me. So overall, as my school year progressed and the voices got louder and more incessant and the switching became more uncontrollable and more dangerous and the kids got meaner and my life got more chaotic and my traumas got more intense, everything got more and more messed up and I got worse and worse at school. So how do I read with voices? I just do because I learned to read with voices. And that's all I can explain is that the voices are just so second nature to me that I am never ever too confused by them and I'm never ever too far from them so I never feel weird about hearing them. So I can concentrate on a book while having a simultaneous conversation about what we're going to eat for dinner and I'm fine. And I can have, you know, but then on bad days when my mental health is really low and I'm switching a lot, I can't read um, because it's too loud. I can't concentrate and I'm never myself for more than 20 or 30 minutes at a time. Um, so bad days are bad and good days are fine. So when I have a month where I read 16 books, it's because I've had some bad days that month. And when I have a day, a month that I read 26 books, it's because I've done pretty well that month and I really haven't had that much trouble. But that being said, those four days that I'm missing from the month were probably bad days because I can basically read a book a day and I have time to read a book a day. So the fact that I don't read a book a day is kind of nervous to me because it means that I have at least three or four days that are bad in a month. Um, that's better than it used to be, but it's still what it is. So I hope that that answers your questions about my reading with voices in my head. If you have any more questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Um, I'll try and answer them the best that I can. But again, remember this is coming from the perspective of someone who grew up with voices, not someone who came into voices later. So yeah. Um, I am hoping you guys like this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, click that subscribe button down below. If you have any questions or comments, again, leave them in the comment box. I will talk to you all in my next video and I'll see you soon. Bye.